G'day guys, we're back in the Purpose Built Moto Shop. We've got a 2021 Harley Davidson Fat Bob. Not our standard order of operations with Purpose Built Moto, but we we're super excited to get our hands on this one. The client wanted something pretty off the wall and we were happy to oblige. Let's get into the build and what we've done. So this thing came in here, it's only got a few thousand Ks on it. Our rider, Phil, he'd been getting around on it for a little while. He's got this and he's also got a big road glide that he rides. The idea with this one was to start pulling a bit of the old Harley styling away, give it a more tracker sort of scrambler vibe, and then fix some few things up. He wanted a big fat wheel on the front, was one of the very specific requests that he had. So we've gotten into that. First, we'll start with the details on the motor. So as he bought it, it was a 114 cube M8 Harley Davidson motor. It's been fitted with a stage three kit and then we've custom fabricated a two into one into two exhaust with a Works USA set of mufflers. The dress up kit that we've put on was from Rough Crafts. They make these really nice rocker covers, air box, cam covers. So that sort of stuff has been fitted to really dress the engine up in a nice anodized gloss black. And then once we started fabricating the headers, those were all smoothed out and sent for ceramic black as well. These Works USA mufflers are something we've been using in a few of our builds lately. Super nice product um, that they've been starting to get a little bit more popular in USA. We've got distribution in Australia here now with um, bikemonkey.com. I'll start this thing up at the end of the video. It sounds insane. I can't wait for you guys to hear it. It's a real beast. Now, once we were finished with dressing up the engine and fabricating that exhaust, we jumped onto the suspension before we hit the rest of the fab work. Doing the suspension early on is something that we've started to do a lot more of, just because you need to get your basis right so the bike is sitting as it will once it's finished so you can fabricate everything to suit. We've sort of been caught out a little bit in the past, so making sure we get the foundation correct before we start fabricating all of the aesthetics is something that we've been working on a fair bit. So on the rear, we've jumped up to a 13 and a half inch Legend suspension shock. This is a really common upgrade for these bikes. It makes them handle a lot better because they are really washy in the tail end as they come stock. And then on the front, we've gone with a set of Olin's cartridges fitted to the standard forks. Now these Olin's cartridges lift your suspension up anyway, but we wanted to go a little bit further. So we had Joe from Ride Dynamics when he was doing the rest of the suspension, make us up some fork extensions and then also modify the internals to lift the front end up a bit. This has helped us to create a more flat profile across the bike. Um, with the lifting up of the rear, it sort of really steepens up the front of the bike. So we wanted to relax that a bit by lifting the back. And also one of our client requests is what, he wanted to ride this thing around some gravel roads. Um, he does a lot of sort of like overnight camping trips or three or four day rides where he's sleeping rough. So this is the bike that he's gonna be doing it on. Not too much heavy off-road because this thing is an absolute monster to handle, but it'll do the job um, and the suspension we wanted to make sure would keep up with the sort of riding that he wanted to do. Now, while the suspension was getting done, we had these wheels on order. So once it rolled back into the shop, these Canyon wheels could be fitted up. These are a 40 spoke, fat spoke wheel from Canyon Wheels in the US. We've gone with a black hub, black rim, and a copper spoke. This copper color that they've produced, I don't know how they've done it. It's sort of like a candied brown color almost, but an awesome color to start to work from. Um, we worked pretty closely with Phil to make sure we got this correct, because that would set the tone for the rest of the project. So with these wheels, we've gone with a 180, 17 on the front and the back. So that's a five and a half inch rim, front and rear. So you've got a huge, huge tire up front and then uh, just over the width of a standard tire on the back and at a bit bigger rim size. That really opens you up in terms of options for tires. The tires that we're running on this thing are a Pirelli MT60 RS. These are a standard rear tire on a Ducati Scrambler and an awesome dual sport tire. Pirelli have actually sponsored this video today. 
We're running through a lot of their tires at the shop at the moment. They have something for everything, from dirt bikes right up to your super sports. So I highly recommend you jump on the Pirelli Australia website, check them out next time you need a new pair of shoes for your bike. So once we got the rubber fitted and the wheels on, we went about upgrading the brakes. So we've gone with a Brembo caliper upgrade, front and rear from Free Spirits Parts. They do some really good upgrading parts for Triumphs and Harley Davidson coming out of Italy and we use them quite a bit. So those have been done. And then we've gone with a Lindel bow tie rotor. These are rotors that I found in a local suppliers catalog that are really unique and sort of offer a different look than what you would normally get, especially with the all black rotor. So with running these, you've got to run a specific pad that also comes from Lindel brakes. So we've upgraded everything front and rear and we'll take you on the rear in a second. You can sort of check out the details there. But I think the combo of these wheels, tires and the brakes really set up for the rest of the project to come together. Now here you can really sort of see the idea of the two into one into two exhaust coming together and start to really set up that tracker style. So the Lindel brake rotors, you can sort of see a little bit more of them here. Such an awesome piece, really unique setup with a Brembo caliper. And then these works USA mufflers. We've gone to sort of like into two pipes where on that exhaust joint, it sort of still like looks like it's separate. Um, really nice style, but it's sort of like a kiss pipe. Gets you that airflow sharing between the two cylinders and then coming out the back. And these things really got some bark. Because we wanted to keep the tail clean on this and we'll start running through some of the sheet metal fabrication in a second swing arm mounted um, plate mount and then we've used our new omni lights you've seen these on a couple of our builds we're testing the hell out of them at the moment getting them ready to release for you guys uh, and they are super close i promise so this sort of setup um, built out of chromoly steel and our fabrication bungs over the rear wheel gives you a you know it's a pseudo fender keeps the cops off your back in not having a super nice short tail you know if you had a number plate mounted up off the back under the tail here, it'd be way too short. So these are a really great way to, um, to sort of like keep your bike legal, have all your lighting and plates where they need to be, but still keep that really great style on your tail. So before we get into the sheet metal work that we've done on this bike, the lighting setup on the rear here, we've got two strip lights that have been mounted into our tail. And then obviously the indicators on the rear, but they also act as a brake light. So the Omnis we've been working on are a three in one LED. Let me just turn these hazards off here. So when you rip on the brake, those will light up too, giving you really good visibility from the tail. Now, this tail is something that is very not often seen on something like a 2021 Fat Bob, but Phil wanted this sort of like pseudo scrambler tracker style thing. So it was our job to figure out how to make that work on this machine and deliver. So what we've done is shape up this box underneath here. So if you're familiar with these frames, um, you'll know how this all sort of sets up, but just a quick run through. This is a standard cover here. And from the end of the tank, you sort of, the, the backbone of the frame runs down this way into your swing arm and then your seat is normally a lot lower. So your frame rail runs along here and then the same on the other side, it's a big cast, um, cast iron piece or cast steel piece. So we've put some bungs in place and then started to build a tail box, I guess you would call it, from these points. So this is shaped up and you've actually got quite a bit of uh, room in here. So this uh, tail section, flips up and you've got a lot of storage space under here. So that was something I wanted to make sure that Phil had, um, he requested that we made some bag racks, which I'll go through in a second, but this sort of setup can hinge up. You can keep a toolbox under there, a bike cover, whatever you want. Um, so that was our way of making sure that the seat profile was flat, but we also had something nice tying from the standard Harley frame into our sort of tracker cafe racer tail thing here. So the way that we went about this was starting from our mounting points, we shaped up the sheet metal here and then boxed it in at the tail. And then I got to work on shaping this. Now, this was something that I would normally have a buck to work on, but because I already had the base, I sort of laid out the seat profile and then just built back from there. So it was all sort of done, well, not really freehand, but I don't know. It was just done. It, there was no bark or shaping pre-planned. I just sort of like ran at it and made something that worked. So 
This all came out really well. I'm super happy with the styling that we've made across the, the length of this bike. Um, and then the riding position that we've achieved with these mid-mount pegs is actually really comfortable and I'm sure Phil's gonna be happy on those long rides that he loves taking. Now speaking of the riding position which I mentioned before, what we had to do with this, because we were lifting the seat up so much, we wanted to bring the bars up and slightly back. So I designed and had CNC machined by our mate Marcus down the road, um, a set of extra bolt-on risers. Now you can get extra risers that bolt onto the standard setup, but they don't have a rearward offset, which is something that I wanted to make sure I had. So Phil's uh, about as tall as I am, and me sitting on a bike like this, it's pretty big. So I wanted to make sure that he was comfortable and able to control this wherever he wanted to ride it. So these offset risers were made. We've kept the standard bars and swapped out for a much smaller Koso digital dash here, which is a, a standard like Harley accessory upgrade that you can get. So this was all made um, to, to work with the standard bar risers. And then we've also made a little bag rack on the front here. Because of Phil's trips away, and I keep on mentioning this, he wanted to be able to go out and carry his gear with him. So we've got a small bag that mounts up on here. It's about nine liters. And then we've got two racks that unbolt for with a couple of bolts that house a couple of 20 liter bags that hang off the side. Sort of like a saddle bag, if you could call it that. Um, Obviously without the big fender struts and stuff hanging off the rear of this, we had to get creative. So I'll pull one of those down out of the shelf and uh, just sort of give you a show of how that actually bolts on in a second. Before we get there though, just a last little bit on the front end. So with the uh, forks lifted and all the rest of it, I actually set Donnie onto this task and got him to make us up a really nice custom front fender. So this is a hand-shaped piece. He's also hand-shaped a set of fork shrouds here that protect the chrome on the forks. Bit of a dirt bike styling thing, but we do like using it on a fair few of our bikes. And it's also something that you do see a lot of Harley guys um, using it. The dudes who wheelie their diners and stuff, they tend to have these like cool front fenders with fork shrouds and stuff. It looks pretty good. So we've sort of taken from that style. Dylan's shaped up some really nice heavy looking bar work and it's, um, you know, fits with the rest of this thing. This thing is big, it's beefy, it's sort of heavy and strong. So the style brief was, was totally that and he's really nailed it with his front end. All right, so before we run you through the paint, I'll just quickly run you through these bag racks. So these are a 19 mil chromoly tube that we've used. This uh, picks up on a lot of the frame mounts. I mean, an awesome thing, just as a side note, about these Harleys is there are frame mounts everywhere. They have like, so many uh, threaded holes throughout this whole frame. It's, you know, if you wanna mount anything, this is the bike to do it on. It was just like, we had our pick of anything. So we made up uh, two of these identical racks pretty much. There's one for this side, one for the other side. They pick up on a few frame bolts on and off in a matter of minutes, um, just a couple of bolts. And because it is a Harley, you need shitloads of Loctite. So make sure you carry a bit of that in your bag. So you can chuck these on throw these, um, the bags on and, and head out for the weekend. So um, we wanted to make sure that he wasn't riding around like this all the time because it looks a lot better like that. But um, yeah, a really good option for Phil. At least this bike is gonna do exactly what he wants it to do and uh, with handfuls of power as well. Now, as it came to finishing up this bike, we had a lot of raw metal to cover. So we've gone down to Nathan at Live and Loco. You would have seen his work on our Shannon's Dream bike build and a couple of our other builds. And we worked up this concept. So this one took us a long time to do. There's a lot of metal to cover. It's a pretty weird shaped bike. It's not something that you, you know, you can't just buy something like this off the shelf. So it took us a fair bit of time. I had to go over to Nathan's spot, um, maybe two or three times to work this out. And we'd sort of like, we knew the colors that we wanted to use. We wanted to tie in a lot of the black. We wanted to use the copper tones off the wheels from Canyon and then, um, we had to work out how to blend all those together. And Nathan came up with this really great idea to use a Nardo gray pinstripe. So these uh, pinstripes are all laid down in, by hand. He just sort of like freehands a lot of this stuff, which is unreal. Um, if you want to check him out, episode four of our Shannon's Dream bike build, you can watch him doing it. It's pretty unreal. So this sort of stuff came together where we just sat it on his bench and went over, started drawing lines until something clicked and it worked. So. This, um, this copper tone that you can see on the tank here really pops in the sunlight, uh, but you know, it's, it's quite subtle when it's not. And then we've used a copper leaf 
pinstripe to start doing some of these detailing pieces, especially on this tail here. He really came up with this nice idea to incorporate the Harley logo into the pinstriping, which I was frothing on. And then of course, it's got our purpose-built moto signature sitting on the back here. We've got a few shop logos here and there, but all over, it's, it's a reasonably simple paint job, but there's a lot of work that went into this to make it that simple, I guess. The seat, of course, our man from uh, Timeless Auto Trim, Jamo's knocked it out of the park. We had to incorporate some mounts here, so we've laid down a few of these eyelets on the seat to add a bit of detail, but they also act as access points for the mounting bolts under the seat. So chuck an Allen key down there, pop the seat off, and then this whole seat hinges forward so you can access the storage box underneath. I can't wait to start this thing up for you guys. It is an absolute animal. So I'm gonna kick it in the guts now. Make sure you check out the test ride. There's a few epic sound clips in there and I really had a good time throwing this thing around some twisty corners out in Tally Valley. Thanks for watching, we'll see you on the next one. Yeah, no worries. I think this is about far enough. I was having a bit too much fun anyway. It's about time to go home. I'd stay out here forever otherwise. Oh, it's a bit sad, isn't it? I have to go back to work. I know. Let's <laughs> look at the day too. All right. Purpose-built moto has built a great community of both riders and builders around what we do. Whether you love our builds, you use our parts on your project, or you're just here for the content that we create on social media, thanks for being part of our tribe. Next time you're in the garage planning out your build, or you're just tinkering around, make sure you jump on to purposebuiltmoto.com, support the cause, and grab a few parts for your pride and joy.